Hi, my name is Lindsay Peoples-Wagner. I'm the editor-in-chief of Teen Vogue, and today I'm gonna tell you how I got here. Objective. One thing that I've always really wanted to do with the work that I'm creating is empowering young voices and really making inclusivity at the forefront of everything through the lens of style. Headshot. So this is the headshot that I use, uh, and I actually love that this isn't like a traditional headshot. I don't have like a blazer on. It's not on like a very gray, plain background because it's really indicative of who I am as a person. I'm always in hoops. That's my thing. I love red, I love color. And I think specifically there's so many things in this from the photography to this um, artwork that says every nigga's a star to my Angelo books. It's really encompassing of who I am. Social media. I would say that I use Instagram the most uh, for really talking about things that I'm doing at work and it's where I find that I actually engage with people the most. I think people that have to post six times a day or really try to calculate and make it analytical, it just takes the fun out of it and I, and I don't think it really comes off as authentic, so I really just post when I feel like it and when I have something to say. Work experience. I'm editor-in-chief of Teen Vogue and I've been in this position since October 2018. Day to day, it's really restructuring of a lot of things. When I came in, there were really a lot of pivotal changes that I wanted to make to the brand, uh, whether it be focusing more on fashion and beauty and how we cover politics and um, how we talk about identity as a young person. There were just so many initiatives that I really wanted to instate. I'm also the person who's responsible for hiring talent and staff and who's on covers, everything in between. I have no idea how many people report to me. It's an absurd number. It's over a hundred. It's really hard to hire these days because I'm really looking for someone who is hungry to do the work and less thirsty for attention. I get a lot of resumes that are poorly put together. I do really want young people to be a bit more diligent when they're sending their resume and making sure you're sending it to the right person and asking for the right job, doing your own research and, and taking initiative to make sure that it, that it comes correctly. The Teen Vogue Summit is really special to me because it's really important for a brand like us to connect with our readers. A lot of the summit is choosing who's on panels and choosing who we feature and choosing who's on the cover. And so a lot of that work is also on my plate to be done. I think the most unexpected thing that I've had to do in this job is probably have a million meetings, which I don't know, nobody told me. Being an editor-in-chief at Teen Vogue has, is specifically a dream job for me because I've spent so much time at this brand. It means so much to me personally. It's the dream to really have control and really help influence culture and give a platform to young people that I think that other brands and media companies would never do. Before becoming editor-in-chief of Teen Vogue, I was fashion editor at The Cut in New York Magazine from April 2015 to September 2018. When I started out as an editor, it was very different because I was a bit more meek and I was a bit more just careful with the content that I put out or things I said in meetings to pitch for stories. As a fashion editor, my tasks were really starting out were really just, you know, writing market stories, helping style with shoots, um, helping anything in the fashion department that needed, but I really made the role my own and started to do a lot more interviews, um, started a couple columns. I had a column called The Blow Up where I styled and wrote about up and coming emerging talent. Fashion was my main beat, but I definitely dibble dabbled in, in culture and other things as well. The piece that I wrote, Everywhere and Nowhere, What It's Like to Be Black in Fashion, was really a passion project of a lot of different things. It was about six months of, of research, writing, interviewing, transcribing, um, organizing, editing things down. It's It's been an amazing thing to see people really talk about their experiences because traditionally I think that people of color and, and specifically black people have felt like they needed to be silent about the way that they've been treated in the fashion industry. I'd actually had a lot of people who had said I shouldn't do it and that I was gonna be blacklisted and that I wouldn't be able to get a job. I did win an ASME Next Award for top journalists under the age of 30. I definitely, at The Cut, really got to spend a lot of time thinking about what kind of writer I want to be. And I do think that, you know, people love fashion because they, they think that it can be frivolous and parties and free clothes and all of these 
seemingly surface glamorous things, but when it gets down to it to really find your footing in this industry and to be more than someone who just cares about clothing, you really have to latch on to something that sustains you personally, um, that's almost visceral and feels like it's part of you. Before I was at New York Magazine McCut, I was a fashion reporter at style.com, which is now merged into vogue.com, and I was there from 2014 to 2015. When I was at style.com, uh, rest in peace, style.com, it was such a beautiful, print magazine and also online. So that was really what attracted me to working at style.com. My day-to-day -day duties really span from, you know, administrative things, helping any editor out, transcribing, you know, producing pieces up on the site. One of my favorite things that I worked on when I was at style.com was we would have to sit and do something called modelizing. We would have to sit there and actually go through names and lists and write the models that corresponded to walking in each show. I always found it really interesting because it was a way for me to dream up new stories that I wanted to do, like this cool model. During the day, she actually goes to school to be a chemist and it would turn into a story. I think it also just helped um, give me a memory of a lot of different trends and designers and shows that were really iconic because we were in charge of going through archives of shows. I left Style.com because, I mean, it was just time, but I, I needed more money. Before Style.com, I was fashion market assistant at Teen Vogue uh, from 2012 to 2015. I was able to get my job at Teen Vogue because the same boss that I had when I started working at Teen Vogue was also my boss when I interned. So she was the one who actually directly reached out and said, if you're still looking, we have something open. I started out just in the closet, which is literally you know, organizing and merchandising shoes by color and brand and organizing racks and making sure that that Prada skirt came in that's supposed to be at the run through it too. From there, it was always just keeping track of every fashion item that came in, which is, you know, standard sample trafficking. It's the most eager job when you come in as an assistant because you don't really know the playing field, you don't really know who you should help, if you should offer to do this for one person if the, or if they'll find that annoying. By the middle of my time at Teen Vogue, I was able to work on a lot of special projects which was fun. At the time, Teen Vogue had a bedding line that was really fun, and I got to work on that and figure out different patterns, and this is gonna go on this comforter, and this is where it's gonna be sold. I helped you know, work on the Teen Vogue handbook, which was um, an old school like handbook of all the people that worked at the brand and telling their story. And At that time, actually, as an assistant, I was only making minimum wage. On the weeknights, I actually worked at DKNY and changed mannequins. Um, and I did that till like two or three in the morning. And then on the weekends, I waitressed at a Jewish restaurant in Tribeca. I think uh, the thing I learned is, you know, working other jobs at the same time as working a full-time job, always be nice to people who help you in service. They're not doing it for fun. They're, they're doing it because they need to survive. So by the time I left Teen Vogue, I was really just tired of working three jobs and needed more money. Before Teen Vogue, I was freelancing at Oprah Magazine um, as a reporter from 2011 to 2012. I worked with the digital fashion team at that time, and it was anything from writing, you know, up a blurb about a new brand that we were crazy about, you know, help with styling of shoots. I got to work on Oprah's favorite things, which was really fun. I did that freelance job, but I was always freelance styling for people. A lot of stylists would hit me up and say, oh, so-and-so's rich daughter may need a dress for this birthday event that she's going to, I would take gigs like that. Before Oprah Magazine, I was a closet intern at Teen Vogue starting in 2010 and on and off into 2012. So Teen Vogue was my first magazine internship. I had actually talked to one of my journalism teachers at school about it and she saw a post on this site. They were looking for someone to just basically come clean the fashion closet during winter break. I really just wanted to get my foot in the door and just see what the culture was like. I came back like that next summer um, and the summer experience was vastly different because there was a lot more people there and I really got to see how all these big shoots come together and how you plan out all of the model castings and how you, you know, really build a magazine from start to finish, which was really amazing and I, I always think back on that time. 
I went to McDonald's for one of my bosses regularly. I had to walk people's dogs. I had to go get coffee. I had to go pick up people's children. Like, I did a lot of things that you probably shouldn't do, but you do when you're an intern because you're hungry and you want to prove to people that you really want to be there. Education. I studied at Buena Vista University. I graduated with a bachelor's in journalism and I was there from 2008 to 2012. So I studied abroad my junior year of school and I went to London College of Fashion. And I took every course from PR to how to drape um, because I knew how to sew um, and you know, fashion history on different trends and really just wanted to expose myself to all of it because I, I wanted to figure out kind of what I really was good at. I don't actually think that people should go to fashion school traditionally unless you want to be a designer because designing is very specific and you really have to be able to know all your textiles, know how to drape and know about production and all of those things. Fun fact, I had a singing scholarship. I've been singing all my life, I just did not want to sing professionally, so I used the money to <laughs> pay for school references. I would include Anna Wintour on my resume. She's my current boss. I feel like I feel like she would vouch. I think that Anna would say that I'm just really competent in my convictions and feel really strongly about changing the culture of inclusivity. And that's everything on my resume. Time to print. This is a very nice resume. If I have this myself. <laughs> it's also very pretty. I'm very into this. I wouldn't put Anna on my resume. That's just weird. I wouldn't necessarily write like my beat because I feel like that's a weird term. Like I would I would just list articles that I've written. I would say to any young people who are dreaming of becoming an editor-in-chief to just work hard and really, really focus on what you want to do and what you want to say because there's so much noise in this industry, but it really does come down to work ethic and having something unique and original to bring to the table. That's it, that's my resume.